Hello and welcome to Helps the Pie Unmute. Today, 14 of the Slime Experiments Development. We're going to be continuing where we left off, creating a couple more levels and all that good jazz. There is something that we have to do before we create more levels. That's just a little clerical uh, thingy. But before we jump in to all of that, I think we can go to our monitor here. There's one thing that I would like to show, and uh, I've been reaching out to a couple of uh, sprite artists and whatnot to see if I can get in the process of getting some sprites for not only my uh, my Doom Doom like game that I'm going to be making after this one completes, but also sprites that I could use in a uh, Metroidvania type game that I also want to make. And I got the first sprite basically done. Uh, it's just a simple idle animation. I, I just asked for like a really simple uh, idle animation for uh, the main character, who is my character I call Jura. And I just like, yeah, hey, you, you artists, make, make this for me. And I'll pick the one that I like. And I'll go with them to make the, the art for the, the show for the show, for the game, whatever. So anyway, I got the first one back today, and here it is, as you can see. A lovely little idol there. There were some issues along the way with uh, the, the design that she currently has. We're using an older design of hers. Uh, the newer design she has, longer, uh, like, pigtail, twin tail things that go down, like, past her butt um, and whatnot. But all that and then having a sword to shield out all the time was going to be like a bit of a pain to deal with so we just want this default idol and when she needs to use a sword or a shield just like in um castlevania and stuff she'll just pull them out and attack with them and then like they go away like a pocket dimension kind of thing right um so that's her base sprite they're gonna be if i like uh get this ball rolling on this project in the future she will be the main character for my metroidvania type game and yeah, that's that's uh, just wanted to show there. Anyway, thought oh, that was cool. That is done by Lucas Young nine eight eight. You can find them over on Fiverr. Uh, they've been working with me and all that. Um, anyway, that's that. If I have more stuff to show in the future, as I get them from the other artists or I get the uh, the monster done from Lucas Young there, uh, I'll also show that. The first monster I'm getting is a slime monster, but not like our little slime here. It's more of a grotesque. A monstrous slime because it's going to be used in the doom like so i wanted more like hardcore enemies rather than like cutesy um little things that you're going with here right they're, they're going to be monsters this time not monsters that you're playing as right so, stuff anyway that's just kind of the uh little update there on what's going on behind the scenes for other stuff i got a lot of things that i want to do but I, I just lack the time and the budget at the moment to do stuff so Good stuff. Good stuff. Anyway, folks, let's continue. And like I said, before we really jump into things, we need to change up our pause menu and add a new button to it. We need to add an unstuck button because, as we have seen, the player can get stuck in the walls, and that is not good. Not good at all. Uh, and so, uh, rather than, actually, yeah, we don't want to edit this pause menu, I'm sorry. That's my fault. We need to close this, go to our main menu, where the actual thing is, because this is just the, the save things is just the testing um, thing here. In fact, I could, I think I'll just take these and put them in the testing space. For now, move them to the top here, okay. and we can uh, pop open our pause menu here. Here we go. All right, and I can go ahead and just remove this save things or hey, save things scene. Yeah. Okay. So. First things first, let's go ahead and open up the pause menu script. So we will need to add more dialogue 
Uh, the more important code to that. So first of all, let's do that, and then let's change up these buttons a little bit. So the resume button. Where is the resume button? It's just the unpause button. Okay, that's what I named it. We're gonna move these all down a little bit so that they uh, make room for another button, essentially. Uh, reset level settings, and then we're just gonna copy the reset level one and move it up here to there. And we've gotta make sure that it's above that other menus thing or else it's gonna show up where we don't want it to be. This is going to be our unstuck button. We'll just add a unstuck there, easy peasy. And let's go ahead and make a public void unstuck. Save that. I just didn't bring the code over here to show you guys. I'll show you in a second. I just wanted to get this done first. So we can do this that and then over here uh, ba, ba, ba. am i just blind yeah it's right at the bottom jesus christ it's alphabetical order my guy okay so that's gonna be our unstuck button now we need to uh look at the um values here. So we're at 103 here. What if we're just at 100 here? Okay. Then unstuck. So let's go with 50. Okay, so every 50 is what we'll do here for spacing. So at uh, 50, then we'll go 0. And then the main menu, it should be negative 50. Which button? Negative 100. And the resume button is going to be negative 150 right there. So that's gonna be all our buttons. I think we could space them out a little bit better. If we look at that, it's kind of jumbled together. Having some better spacing would be optimal. So let's try this again. So settings is first. Let's go with 60 each. How about that? Oops, that's not what I wanted. Need the unstuck one first. So we'll go with so rather than 50, it'd be 40. And then after 40, it would be negative 20, right? And then after negative 20, we would have negative 80. And then after negative 80, uh, we would have negative 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, negative 150. And then our unpause button would be instead of negative 50. That doesn't seem right. That seems like a bigger gap than before. Hold on. Eight. Hold on, hold on one second. Good. Main menu, negative 80. What am I doing? Hold on. Was it 50 or 40? I'm sorry. We go from settings down to that, that's 60. We have negative 80 minus 60. Negative 140, my bad, okay. Negative 140. And then minus 60 again would be 200 for the unpause button, so negative 200. Unfortunately, that also is bad, great. I wish there was like just a button that would like make them equally apart, right? Okay, let's go through one more time. This time, rather than 60, we're gonna go 55. So 45, 45 minus uh, 55. Gonna take us to negative 10 for the little reset button. And then it's gonna be negative 65 on the main menu. And then on the quit button, it's going to be negative 120. The unpause button is going to be uh, the, what is that be? negative 175, which, perfect, great spacing. Okay, we'll go with that. 
Excellent. So let's go ahead and hit save. We've added our unstuck button. Now we just need to actually do what we want it to do, right? So let's minimize all this. I won't be testing it quite yet. That's fine. But uh, let's order here, please. There we go. Okay. So now that that's gone and, and done with, let's do what we're going to do here. So first of all, we're going to have to, when the player presses the button, we essentially want to do what resume does. So let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, but we also need to move the player to where they belong, right? So we need to first do game object player equals game object dot find game object with tag player. Oops, player. Then we need to also do game object spawn equals game object dot find the game object with tag respawn. Okay. Although I, I think I could just combine this all into one line and do that, right? Incidentally, um, one thing, the spawn point is not tagged as respawn in all of these, so I'm going to have to change that real quick. So respawn. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to go through all of our previous levels as well and uh, do that. So it's going to be a little bit of a, a process here. Um, respawn right at the top. Just the second one. If I just do spawn and I click through... Nope, it's gonna... I'm going to have to select <coughs> individually. That's great. Love to see it. What? I didn't click on the right one. Okay. Oh boy, you'll love to see it. I have to do that. A good thing we did this now and not like after we made all 50 levels because then it would just take even longer. So, wait, that's end level. Damn it. Untagged. Let me just double check here with this one too. Okay. Thought maybe I wrong one there. Six. Here's for seven. Oops. Here's eight. Ugh. Although, I could potentially just, rather than doing this, I think I have a different way to approach this somewhere else, don't I? I think it's in the pitfall. Hold on. Before we spend more time going through there, pitfall, uh, open you up. So when we go through, we do the level spawn. And, oh yeah, right. We actually drag the thing in there. Because I was thinking we could take the level, just find game object of level, and then take the um, zero, one, two, three, fourth child. Right? So if we were to do game object dot find game object of tag level dot transform dot get child and then four zero one two three four yeah that's gonna be the spawn point. So if we do that instead dot Transform dot position. The sound of the user's statement. If I just grab um, the 
copy this. You'll need to do a one line game of the player e oh, dot transform dot position equals that. I think I can yeah do that. Perfect. So I just get rid of that. So it's all one line. This should move the player back to the respawn location. And yeah. Anyway. We will really be able to test it unless we go into uh, the main menu and do that kind of stuff, which we can easily. Um, yeah. This should work rather than having to go through and retag everything. I will retag stuff going forward just so we, uh, we have it in case we need to use it for something else. But yeah. Okay. We have unstuck. Let me just make sure. Move the player. Uh, maybe. Because one thing could cause issues is if the player currently has a movement vector kind of thing. So we can do reset POS on him as well. Um, so let's do that. So we're just going to grab this dot reset or dot get component player move dot reset POS. That way it just resets all of our stuff. So that way we don't run into an issue where we use it on a conveyor belt and then we're constantly still moving because we never technically left the conveyor belt uh, like that. So that should take care of that problem. I'm going to close a couple more of these. Okay. And I don't think anything else matters. Let's go ahead and close that. Or probably an issue to come up later that we just did not uh, think of that would happen, but it just uh, kind of happens sometimes. So let me... That up. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and open up the main menu here. And we're going to close this scene here. And let's go ahead and hit play. And we'll just test it out real quick. Um, so if I hit continue, as we can see, we can move down here, hit unstuck, it moves us back up to here. And it does not change anything else in the level. Um, at all, so that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Hell yeah. All right. Open back up the testing space so we can finish making our levels. All right, so let, let's, before we jump into making the level, uh, add an unstuck button on the pause menu that lets you move back to the spawn point. Done. Additionally, I did do one thing off screen that I do want to show you guys. I think it was level 2-2. Yes, 2-2 here where we use the inverse block for the first time. I added some extra dialogue. Before we just had, oh look, a new block, wonder what it does, what would you find out? I then mentioned it might be worth mentioning here in case you find yourself stuck. But if you're stuck, just think and about becoming unstuck and I'll teleport you back to the entrance. And then I used in brackets uh, the, the buttons to use. So escape and then the unstuck button. I figured that would be a good time to Tell the player about that uh, in this particular place because the inverse block can cause you to get stuck. Ooh. And this is the first time the inverse block gets introduced. So the player will know they can use the unstuck button to just teleport back to uh, the beginning. And it also says there, worry not, this won't change anything you've done during the experiment. Um, so I hope that gets across that the player We'll not have to worry about using Unstuck to get Unstuck. Okay. Yosh! With that done, I need to reset this as the default parent once again. And if we look here... Wah! So, our next idea was to fill a depositor by avoiding attack tower projectiles. That is the plan. 
That's the plan. It's a little uh, basic even for, for my descriptions of what we were going to be doing. Well, that's fine. Um, I guess what we could do to start off with is just place down some random attack towers. We'll put one here, put one here. Let's put one like here, put one like here. Remember, we can't have them firing downward. That just does not work. Uh, let's put another one like here, I guess. And how about one over, I don't know, here? Like that, maybe? Okay. So now we just got to decide which way they're going to fire. So this one, obviously, going to fire left. This one, I'm just going to fire right. This one, we will have it fire... Up, and actually, you know what? Let's move this one right down there. Okay. This one... Let's have it fire to the right, and this one will have fire to the left. And then let's put the exit. Right here, next to that one. And we can then get our... Depositor. Put it right there. That's where we need to get to. Then we can grab our endpoint and we can drag it down here. For our spawn point, it's going to respawn here and we can just go up here with it. And we hit play, we can see how it looks with just the attack towers going so far. Okay, quite chaotic. Is it going to actually be timed so like none of them hit each other ever? Oh, that's so good. Okay. So, what I could do right now is we could have a pressure plate that spawns mobile blocks in this area. And then all you have to do is get them down to here and just fill up like, I don't know, five or something. But that seems a little bit too easy, right? So we could make use of immobile blocks in the area to block off the area. Obviously we don't want to do that in the path of a projectile. Uh, we just want them to continue firing into the wall and stuff. Um, we could also have converters standing by to allow the player to go over them and like push them around like that. What I might do is I might just drop a converter. Oops, not right now, obviously. But I might just drop a converter like right about here. That way, uh, if a player does get it converted, have that there. I wish, uh, I wish I could just draw lines without having to, like, place a block or something. Let's just do this real quick. So I just want to kind of block off areas where the blocks would be going. Um, so that way we can Hell, exactly where the projectiles would be heading and all that good jazz. I don't want to place anything in their way. second that I'm missing. That one, that one, that one, that one, and then we of course have to do up here. And one last thing. Okay, 
Okay, so that should be everywhere that a um, projectile can be. So let's make real quick a uh, empty child called projectile path. That way we can just very easily delete this when we're done. And it will not interfere with anything else that we do. There we go. Okay. Now we can just minimize projectile path. And we have all of our stuff done. So I'm just going to move that up to the top here. Okay. So, depositor, let's go ahead and make this be six. Why not? We also need to grab the spawn point and fill it in there. Perfect. Okay. So. What can we do to make the level harder? Well, first, let's grab a pressure plate and let's get it to spawn a movable block. It's going to be one object, uh, and that is all we're going to have to do for that one. Okay. And it's going to be spawning a block right here. Okay. Now, one of the obvious things you might do, knowing that the uh, movable blocks and uh, block projectiles is you basically just put a movable block in this square here and that stops this line from going completely. Um, that's really the only one you can block without the block moving because once the movable block is here it's pressing up against this platform which means it's not going to move back any further. But that will allow you to get down here without any issue. And then all you're going to have to do is push down a block to this one and block that area. And once you're blocking that area, you have free range down to here where you can then block that projectile by putting a block like here. Um, and then just get a block over to here, block that projectile, and you can just keep moving blocks down as necessary. Um, you can even grab all six blocks at once and move them. Uh, that would be a thing you could do very easily. So I think what we'll do is we'll just throw some hazards in this area. The one there, the one there. Let's place a there, the one there. Um, there's enough of those. You can then add some movable blocks there there let's go one like here <laughs> there we go um go one here one down here one over here one over here i guess okay Like that spot right there is lonely. Okay, we can do that to have the player that, and then we could also put some, some pit traps around that would cause some issues. I wonder the 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 pitfall does not do anything with projectiles, right? On trigger, yeah, there's no projectiles. So they would just fly right over that. So essentially, what we could do is we could take our lovely pitfall and we can just place it like in front of these guys where they would be shooting from and oops just control the drawn thing we can kind of put these guys right in front of the projectiles path area right that way the player can't just block right in front of them at least they'll have to you know move somewhere else and, and do something um, we could also block the routes where there's multiple things that cross over to cut down on the amount of locations that the player uh could just put one block and have it block multiple directions right um, like that and then we could hmm. 
That's fine. Let me let me hide this and see how it looks. So if we do that, we spawn a block here. We can push it down to here without issues. Go around, push it over to here without issue. And then go down here. We could then just push it down to here with the projectiles that would be just kind of constantly going. Um, we could then just wait for that one to push a block. And before it gets to this hole where it would go in, we could push it down to here and then push it over here where we would be safe from that projectile. And then from here, we could just push it down until it's there. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Anything else that I want to add to this, or do I think it's good? Um, these are basically going back and forth. There'd be some stuff here. I guess I could add a pitfall there. Not like that, though. Cancel. Like this. Also throw one down here. That that this row looking a little lonely. Um. Okay. I think this will do it for the level now. Right. We click this. We can see where all the stuff's gonna go. I'm gonna leave that in the level for right now. Uh, we can deal with that later. Let's play test it. I'm just gonna see how it goes. We're gonna click this, and then we're really free to go down here without any, any trouble. Beginning. I'm gonna move that there just to kind of block things off. Because they're not moving at a speed that would uh, cause too many troubles right now, anyway. Is that not convert? It's not. Excellent. Okay. Now I can go up here and push these three down. And... Brilliant idea here. Gotta watch the projectiles, really. Okay. I'm gonna move these over. And then down. And let's move... Oops. Move that one back there a little bit over and we're gonna go down again and from here i can push these two blocks or just push these three blocks that really doesn't help too much but if we wait for that to go past and then ah fuck i hate to see it i really messed myself there i thought i could get past it but nope no such luck okay that's again Unfortunately, you can't destroy the towers. Um, like I said, you can sort of block them. What I might do is push this one down here. So that that block, like I said, you can just block that area off without too much worry. Because it's not going to cause any problems there. Then we can go, well, if I do this, it's going to turn into purple. That's fine, he says as he runs right into one. Okay, you know what, let's just, let's just take one block at a time. And I just want to see if it is possible for us to get down. G with it, I'm going to say. Okay, so we're gonna pull this block now. Mm. Putting it right there. Wow, that's messed up. Because now if I pull it up, left, uh, up, right, or down, I'm gonna get stuck between a block. Okay. 
What if we do this? Ha ha! And then, aw oh, man. Oh, the inverse blocks die! I forgot! Because the normal blocks block, but the inverse blocks, they destroy. Oh man, that's, that's so fucking good. I totally forgot about that. Okay, so we need to push, get out of the way. Push, get out of the way. I'm gonna go around before it. Is anything bad? Oh god. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, I almost ate shit right there. I almost ate shit there too. God dang, I'm just clipping onto the edges of stuff. <laughs> in my ass. All right, so that was one block in. Repeat that six more times. <clears throat> this one definitely seems like it would eat up plenty of time. Let, let's let's restart and let's time that and see exactly how long that process would take me to do. So I'm going to go all the way around this hole, and then down through here. I keep forgetting that I, as the slime, am allowed to touch the conversion blocks without any issue. And, uh, it's throwing me off. So I see that I'm like, I should stay away from that. But it's actually fine. So... Okay. Now let's go. Okay, so this one block takes me 45 seconds. So if we take 45 seconds times six, which is the amount that we have, um, that's a number. Time math is hard. So we'll say um, 45 times six is 100 and, uh, 270 seconds. Um, divided by 60 is 4.5 minutes. So it would take you about four minutes, maybe five minutes to do this. And that's only if you follow that path. Um, if you decide to do something else, it could take longer. So this map right now, perfect. We don't have to make a single change to it. Not a single change. I love it. You go like that. Very easy, just avoid Getting hit puzzle. What's not to love? We do have a bunch of pitfalls that we have to add in here. Sometimes simple is the, is the best. Okay. Uh, we don't have any block voids. The attack towers can't be destroyed, so resetting them does not matter. Uh, we don't have any gates. We do have a depositor. Hmm, that will need to be reset. Let's go ahead and delete this projectile path item now. And I think that's all we have to do, okay? Not using destroyer blocks and stuff makes it so easy to just set the level reset script up. You don't have to deal with uh, most of the stuff that only changes if it's destroyed. Okay. So for the dialogue, I think we can go pretty straightforward here, but let's check the last level. What was it again? It was, if we unhide that. Um, okay. Nothing special we have to carry over from the last one. Let me hit play here and see where the text box ends at. I think it yeah, ends right here. So there's nothing really that it's obscuring. Okay. All right, so this experiment will be pretty straightforward. will judge your awareness. There is a lot of stuff going on. I 
hate the word obstacles. So I'm just going to use objects instead, and a lot of objects to avoid. Let's see. This experiment will be straightforward and judge your awareness. There will be a lot going on, and a lot of objects to avoid. Other than that, it is a simple, well, move the blocks in the hole. Get out of the room. Yay. Now let me just make sure that, that was a long sentence. I want to make sure that it fits. I don't think it's going to. Oh my god, it did. But I am going to separate it because it did get a little long there. So. I don't think the player would have time to read all of it. So I move the blocks in the hole and get out of the room. Easy, right? Use your knowledge up to now to complete this experiment. Okay, we'll do that. Excellent. Let's go ahead and prefab this baby. Open up level 4-3, toss that one into there, save that next, okay. We can get rid of that bad boy, open up level 4-5, put this one as the default parent, and look at our lovely things to do. Okay, a level where you need to fill a depositor by avoiding attack tower projectiles, completed. All right, a level where you need to move blocks through portals onto conveyors and move them into place. Some requiring a destroyer block, others a movable block. Okay. Um, I think I understand, except the part about the destroyer block, since the destroyer blocks destroy portals. Uh, yeah. That part really doesn't make any sense to me. So. I do have an idea though. Okay. Save that real quick. So, first and foremost, let's go ahead and just decide what we're gonna do. As usual, this blind's gonna spot up there. The end level, let's go ahead and put it down here this time. Tentatively. Draw the right tile map. Go. Okay. So, in this level, we want to use conveyor belts, portals, movable blocks, and destroyer blocks, possibly some gates, uh, pressure plates all over the place, all that good jazz. So, first, and foremost, let's go ahead and get our lovely little pressure plate, and it is going to spawn movable block right there. Map this one. Movable block, one game object. Okay. So, we will then make a room of portals. So let's go ahead and we'll start, let's start here. Go here, 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 and then okay, just like that. So, what we will do from here, and actually, I think I'll do this instead, so I can go bloop 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 bloop, bloop and then bloop and bloop 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 like that. Okay. So the goal is to get to there, but we're gonna have gates that are closing off this area. Um, and then just a bunch of portals along this wall that are going to take blocks that you push into them to other places, right? Okay. Mm, excellent. So. First 
First, let's get some portals going. All right. Now I'm just gonna copy, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna move that one back up here, just to kind of get it out of the way. I could put a set of in, well, well not even I could. I could put some along this wall though as well. We'll see how it how it works first. So we're gonna move this one up to here. And portal B. Let's put over here. Why not? Okay, so portal A, your location is gonna output to right there. Portal B, your location is gonna go over to here. Righto. Okay. So this portal will be fairly straightforward. And we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to add some conveyor belts. Going... It's negative 90, right? For down. Yep, perfect. Okay. I'll have to think about that. So down. Um, we're going to have it center the block. Because why wouldn't we? We have that ability to do so. We're going to do that. And then, at the end of it, we're going to put a block void. And we're going to put a pitfall. That way, if the player ever, um, you know, goes through a portal, they'll go through here and then, you know, they can get a way back to uh, go home. Okay, so next, pressure plate here at the end. This one is going to be one object. It's going to trigger once. It's going to have no exit trigger. Do not care about exit triggers. Okay. This object to change, we're going to have to make a, a gate. I'm going to put it. You know what? Let's make this one. That one. Pressure plate, you're going to affect that gate. There you go. Okay. But we need to change the color on this guy. We go okay and just for the hell of it let's go ahead and get another gate out here as well and then um assets just so i don't have to do this in the future there we go all right we have that done portal one is completed uh that's what it's gonna do simple easy and true next portal number two Portal one, we're gonna have you be here, obviously. This one, we're gonna have you be down here, okay? And what this one is going to do, um, what should we do with this one? So, I might do something like, let's erase that, add that instead, and we can go ahead and take this, like that, put a block void here, keep it out of control. Essentially, I want the player to be able to, like, no matter what portal they go through, get into this pit and avoid you know, death or whatever. These conveyor belts need to be set going to the right, and they are going to essentially block. Excellent. Uh, next, we want to grab the portal A and B's location. Portal A's location is going to be down here. Portal B's location is going to be here. Okay. Excellent. 
So, we've got those done. We just need to add another pressure plate. But for this pressure plate, it's going to do something a little bit different. It is going to open up a different gate. What gate? Not that gate. For sure. It's going to open up this gate. It's going to be in here. This pressure plate, say hello to your gate. All right. We're going to get our tile palette real quick. I'm going to throw this here. We're going to add a destroyer block here. We're going to get a, another conveyor belt. It's going to be going up, so 90 degrees. It's going to be on the center of the block. We're going to have it go out like this. Once that goes away, the destroyer block will go up and it'll do whatever it wants to do there. We'll decide in a second. Okay. Chomping on a muffin. Okay. Pressure plate. Reset level. Yeah, I don't remember. Do we need anything else in the thing here? If it resets the level? Um. We go into here, if reset level equals true, we do reset level, right. Okay, perfect, that's it. All we gotta do. So if that block gets hit, it's going to reset the level. Although, Sorry, muffin. Okay. So yeah, if it's a destroyer block, the first thing it's going to check is if it's a destroyer block. And if it's not destroying or not ignoring destroyers, it will destroy the pressure plate first. So that's what we want to have happen right here. Because if that pressure plate gets destroyed, then the level will not end. Okay, but... We do need a bit of a um, issue for the player here because we have to use these to get here, right? So the player will get a block of some sort. It's going to go across this place, but it's going to have to hit a... Uh, Thing down here. I think I'm just gonna grab this and put it here. We can put a block void here. And another pressure plate here. This one's gonna do once, trigger once, no trigger exit. And then that one's going to take in the that gate? No, this gate, the horizontal gate, right. Horizontal gate, that's the block void, damn it. Pressure plate, gate horizontal, there we go, okay. <clears throat> so, 
first portal, went to that one, you push it down, it triggers, gets rid of the first gate. Second portal, next to this one, goes across here, destroys the, uh, opens the gate here, so that the destroyer block goes out and destroys that destroy, uh, the pressure plate that resets the level, so that the um, next block is to go across here and, you know, ruin that little area. In fact, I'm going to move these other portals that I've not yet used. I'm going to move them into here just to get them out of the way because we're not going to really use them right now. Right? Okay. I'm going to put a portal here. Let's do this. We'll enclose this guy. Um, I guess that one there. Okay. Oops, nope, I need uh, one more face there. Sorry, that's my bad. That's where the portal has to go. There we go, okay. Portal will go here. Block will spawn, go through there. You can get into that pitfall stuff. Next, we can spawn a pressure, or we'll have a, uh, hmm, I'm gonna do that instead, and then these guys here, up to here, we'll have a thing that goes like that, but Hmm. We need a way to get to the uh, pitfall down there. We'll do that for now. Let's grab the conveyor belts. Okay, so these are just going to be pointing upwards, which means they need to be 90 degrees instead of that. Up. So one, two, three, four. Five. We're gonna have a block void there, and a pressure plate right here. Gonna one object, trigger once, no destroy. Gonna grab a horizontal gate, copy it. This one is going to go right there. Okay. Perfect. Plus two, which means. We have a little bit more room to work with. Essentially, this is going to be like a, a maintenance tunnel down through here. So, I could essentially get... Use one, two... Mm -hmm. That's tough. I guess I could, if I grab it like this and go down here... Do it like that, maybe? Could I fit two more in? Hmm. I put the exit in both corners. Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Could, I guess. Okay. Move that one here. That one here. Let's grab a. I don't want to have to. The less, the less changing I have to do, the better here. So we'll grab a, a conveyor belt and a conveyor belt. I don't know if I can go to the left, so we're just going to have to make one. So 180. And then left. Copy this, that, and we'll get our block voids here and here. Hey, Ryle, welcome on in. Oh, not there, sorry, one over. Oh, there we go, okay. 
And then so all of these will let the player travel down through here to the pit if they do get into it. But I feel like we should also have the player have to go into one of them in order to do something. Why don't we add a lever here? And this lever, it'll affect a, another gate, I think. Or the lever affect that gate there. Uh, one object to change. Always visible on start. That's good, okay. Perfect, now we just have to add some more pressure plates, move the portals, and that should be done. So, let's add a, another pressure plate here. Uh, one object, trigger once, <clears throat> no exit trigger. Right. Go. <coughs> I want to add two more gates, one, two. And the first one's going to get gate three. Next one's going to get gate four. Okay. Then we just need to move the portals around. So, portal three. I'm going to move you. First of all, let's just get it kind of out of the way here. All right. Portal A, you're going to be moving right there. Portal B, let's move you here. Portal A is going to teleport here. Portal B is going to teleport here. Easy. All right. Portal number four. Or I guess portal two. Move these portals out of the way real quick. Just so I have more room to, to deal with. Okay. All right. Portal A will move you here. Portal B. Move this one down here. B, you're going to exit there. And A, you're going to exit here. Excellent. Boosh, boosh, boop. All right. Portal 3 and then Portal 4. Portal A will have you here. Portal B, put you in this little area. There and there. Boosh, boosh, boosh. Next, with portal A, you're going to go down here. Portal B, you will go over to here. Portal B, will output there. Portal A, will output there. And that should be all the portal areas completed. Okay. That's everything nicely done there. Love to see it. Mm. All this makes sense. I've forgotten which portal goes where already. <laughs> Good time. Okay, so first of all, since part of the test is that a reset pressure plate is going to get hit. Let's go ahead and assign all of the reset stuff. So, starting with pressure plates. All of you are going to get sent there. Then we have a lever right there. We don't have any pitfall. We do have a pitfall, just in case. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that just in case somehow a block manages to get into that pitfall and seal it off. We're gonna do that. Okay. Next we have. A bunch of gates. And I just realized that the uh, the destroyer block is just gonna if we hit play, it's just gonna hit the gate and then destroy itself. Yeah. <sighs> that's that's great. That's that's great. Okay. Which conveyor belt is this? Okay. You're ready about 11. Oh, 
let's have you go down. What? Right. I'm real 11. You're gonna need to go negative. Second. Check, yep, okay. So this pressure plate that we had that was actually um, removing the gate, we're going to want that one to go there, but we're also going to need another pressure plate for it that um, is going to do one object, conveyor belt number 11. Conveyor belt 11. You are the right one, right? Yeah, conveyor belt 11. And then it's going to trigger once, one object. Um, there's no exit trigger. Flip direction needs to go up. That way, it flips the conveyor belt up. I think I can just get away with doing that. Because first the block will remove the gate, second the block will rotate the pressure plate. Um, let me just check the logic here. So, do trigger only happens when it is a uh, conveyor belt. Incidentally, hold on. Did I not make it so that the pressure plate would reset the, uh, <clears throat> um, conveyor belt? I guess I did not, huh? That's not great. Let's, um, drive it and void. Uh, undo trigger. And we'll just copy this. This one will be 180. This one will be left. This one will be right. Negative, positive. This one's going to be down. This one's going to be up. Like that. Then we'll check if conveyor to manipulate does not equal null. Undo trigger. Okay. However, now we also need to add logic down here for if it's not just destroyer block. So. We will check if conveyor to manipulate does not equal null on a return. But we also want to do trigger. There we go. All right, so that should take care of that so we can do it without having just uh, pressure plates. Okay. Good, good, good. I think it'll work now. Okay. So back to this.
Since we do have a, a loose block, we need to add a block spawn and add the destroyer block to our item spawn thing here. So that way I'll always have a destroyer block. However, I don't believe anything else can be destroyed. However, it would be remiss of me to not think that players could outsmart me. So we will go ahead and add portals into our list anyway, because potentially if the players somehow managed to get past this point, get the destroyer block out there and then move it to destroy this portal, it could happen. I don't know how, if this pressure plate like fails to trigger in some rare occasion and it doesn't reset the level when they trigger it, who knows, right? Who knows? Players are crazy. They're insane. Okay. Oh, so I think that's all we have to do. Um, next up, the dialogue, and then we can play test and see how it goes, you know? Okay, so I think for the dialogue, we can say, all right, um, what do we want to do here? Oh, look, we've got more portals. Perhaps you should push blocks. Perhaps you should push blocks through them. Or don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Who can say what will happen if you do? Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Cool. Very simple. Kind of like telling the player what to do, but not telling the player what to do. All right. All right, so we spawn in, hit the block. I think the, I think the second one leads to the level of Reese. Oh, God. That just, like, spread across. Um, it also did not make the destroyer block go for whatever reason. Um, hey, destroyer block, what are you doing, my guy? Its total change velocity is still at negative two. Okay. So, why? Let's take a look at our conveyor belt script. So I'm pretty sure when I do the reset conveyor from the pressure plate script, did I ever, did I ever implement that? I think I made that and then I just uh, did not implement it. So conveyor belt script dot reset conveyor. Reset conveyor. It goes through each. You find the destroyer block and change the thing to that and then it does that, right? Okay, so I, yeah, I think I just never did that. Wait, I had to have, because what? Am I, am I going crazy? Because we had this working when we... We had it working the singularity, right?
right? The singularities worked and then this just didn't? How? I'm so confused. I think now it should still do its thing, so that's good. Okay. Uh, let me push one into three. One into four. One into five. And one into six. And we, of course, have to go through one in order to flip the lever. Is it flip the lever? We can go back home and exit the level in about a minute. Now, I think the reason we finished so quickly is because I'm an idiot. And I forgot that if we... Hold on. I'm just really curious, the uh, the singularity level. Where were you at? Level here. All these conveyor belts, they center the block. What about this one? That one centers the block. Yeah, um... No. Don't we'll center the block. This one, do not center the block. You. And you. Don't center the block. You can center, you don't center. You don't center. You don't center. You center, you don't center. So the reason that the uh, level went by so fast is because most of the conveyor belts um, were centering. So as soon as it enters, or as soon as the conveyor belt would center uh, the block when it entered, it was just getting zipped along real quick, right? Uh, but we don't want to do that. We're going to uncheck the center block on all of these. Um, except for the very first one. We want them to be centered on the first one or any that they're turning onto. So that, and then center that block. Center that block. Go ahead and center that one. Enter that one. Center this one. And that one. And that one. And that one. The rest of them we do not want to center. Uh, because if we if we do center them, then it just causes issues. Also, we're gonna reduce the speed of all of these down to a force of one. Um, just so they take a little bit longer to move anyway. But now if I hit play, we should see a remarkable um, change to how quickly they went down, as you can see. Perfect. So you can actually tell what's going on, and it's not just like, what the hell did I just do? So it will snap to the first one. And then it just kind of goes down nice and slow the rest of the way. That'll be the last one that I need to hit. Of course, I chose the one that goes all the way over here. So it still took a little, uh, about a minute to beat. Mainly because I, uh, yeah, it took longer. Last time it took about a minute as well, mainly because I distracted. I think what we should do actually is move Portal 2 um, to a different one. 
because I think it's if if you just push the block directly into its portal, which is the obvious thing to do, it's of course going to trigger this one first, which then sets you up for um, that. So let's actually move its portal B. And we will move this one's portal B as well. So this one, we're going to move up here. This one, we're going to move down here. Like that. And so this portal B location and portal A location, they're all going to be messed up now. That's fine. So portal A is here. It's going to go down there. Portal B is up here. And its location is now up there. So we're going to have to move it now. Portal A was the second one. They are now portal B. Okay. For this one, portal A is the fourth one down. But it's going to be here. Portal B is right there, and its thing is down here, so it's going to be the fourth one down there, right? Yep, and then let's just double check with these. Yep. And oh, portal A's location is not correct. It needs to go up here. My bad. We would have had two things that just put out down there. Okay, that one goes to there. That one goes to there. Perfect. All right. So now it should be a little bit uh, different. You'll still you'll you'll probably trigger this pressure plate and reset the level at least once before you figure out what's going on. Right. Cause you have to find this path before you can. Uh, do that. And the player might think that this lever is what opens this gate, but they're wrong. So that's great. Okay, so I think that's all we have to do. Um, let's go ahead and copy this one down to here. Let's level 4 5 completed. Let's open up 4 4 and add the end level to it. Save. And another one bites the dust. Okay, next 4 6. Open this guy up. Ball. Go over here. We can then erase all this data. And bam. All right. So, <clears throat> a level where you need to time pushing blocks on a ice slash conveyor to open closed gates so a block can reach a pressure plate to open a final gate. Right. Right. I think I understand what. It is saying. Okay. Well, that seems like... Didn't we do that in a previous level? It wasn't this level. That one was different. Um, kind of like this one. This is kind of like what we, what we did here for, for this level. I forgot the concept of this one. I think this one was specifically... We were pushing blocks across um, ice so we could get in the gates. However, this time we're needing a block to get across a conveyor belt or something to do things, right? Yeah. Okay. So... How do I want to lay this one out? Also, I like how quickly we're just zooming through making the levels now that we actually have a basic concept to work with and we're not spending like 40 minutes just staring at the screen being like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? You know? It's, it's, it's nice. Okay. So anyway, we're going to be using ice, conveyor belts, normal blocks, pressure plates, probably a couple block voids, perhaps. Um, how to do this. So, I think what we should do first, put a pressure plate here. This is going to be the final pressure plate. It's going to trigger once. I was going to do one object. There's going to be no exit trigger. It's just going to manipulate a gate that opens the exit to the level. Okay. 
And after that... What we need to do, basically, is have a conveyor belt that's moving a block at a fairly slow space, pace, right? And we need to then use blocks to manipulate pressure plates to do things on it, right? Um, yeah. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and make a little thing around this. Not on that tile map layer, though. Okay. So something like that will have the conveyor belt going you know, through here and doing its thing. Then it'll eventually land on the pressure plate and activate it. Right? Okay. Um, I don't like how that ended up like that. But, well, there we go. Okay. Let's just get some conveyor belts down first, and we'll do the, the last bit of the level. So let's make one go up. Force of one. This one's going to center the block. We need to go at uh, speed, uh, I think it's 90 for up again. Yep, okay. I'm just going to do that. We're just going to copy this, place it underneath that pressure plate. Uh, we're not going to center the block this time. It doesn't matter. This pressure plate, however, uh, do I have a move block to this? Yes, I do. I mean, I guess that doesn't matter because the pressure, because the conveyor belt underneath is going to move it anyway. So. All right, then we're going to move left. So this is going to change to 180. Not 189. There we go. Okay. Something like that is going to be the, the end goal here. And uh, now I need to make like a control room, essentially, that the player is inside. That has enough room to push blocks around and has the exit inside of it. So what we're going to have to do, perhaps, is... Let's just take a corner. Um, I'm going to leave like that area open right there. And then let's go ahead and maybe I do like this here. And we can just leave, leave gap every so often. I just get rid of these entirely and just have like one mess of conveyor belts like in the middle. Hmm. Okay, well, first of all, let's get a little area made for the exit. Uh, we'll do it just... Let's minimalize the space that we need here. Let's put it there. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And so, this final pressure plate is going to manipulate that gate. Here we go. All right, so that last bit, done. Easy. Okay. Now what we need to do, we're going to make this a little bit longer here. And it is going to then... Grab a conveyor belt here. First, it's going to center the block and it's going to move to the right. And let's grab a conveyor belt. Let's, let's, let's make the conveyor belt track first. And then after we do that, we can decide 
where I would want stuff to go. So let's do this, this. So the, the obvious solution here is we're just gonna have it go around the outside edge of the room. Plus there's that. One second. Gotta reply to a text. Okay. I'm just making sure I didn't accidentally. Okay. You know, let's just grab a couple and move at a time here. Okay. Go, and now we can start moving downward. So let's grab a conveyor belt from here. Go negative 90. And then we need to go down. And we do want it to snap to the block when we change direction. And we want all these to move at a force of one as well to give the player time to do things. Okay. So we'll grab this, move it down, and we'll untick the center block. Let's grab a couple, oop, not like that. I was going to say, let's grab a couple of these and paste them here. All right, now we can grab the first couple of conveyor belts here. I can just extend this path backwards. Grab the last one, make a copy, and it is going to center the block as well. Okay. Okay. Now that we have the, the basic conveyor laid out, what we want to do is do things down here that are going to trigger um, the conveyor belt to change uh, direction and stuff like that, essentially. So we're going to take another conveyor belt, and I'm going to put it just right here. And we're going to have it go down, which is negative 90. Wait, no, what is 90? Oh my god. Okay. Actually, no, we don't need that to go down. We want to go right. It is. Okay. Because we're going to put a block void right here. We're going to need to change that conveyor belt to go in a different direction. Um, otherwise, it's going to get block voided and not complete the level. Right? So, we'll grab this. We're going to have it go over one. Then we're going to grab another one. It's going to go down one, but I think we need to make this one center the block. And the last one, it's going to turn 90. Okay, and it's going to go up, it's going to center the block, and this one is then also going to center the block since it's then changing direction again. And it's going to continue moving. Now we can grab our tile palette. Do something like this. It's easy. Okay. Okay. And then let's do a, a break. And I'll basically just repeat the same thing here. So, one, two, three, and then we're going to go back in, back down, 
back around. I don't even really have to do that. I could just uh, this instead. That. Okay. And so let's go back to our selection tool. One, two, three. Just select this. Let me check that center block. And we're just going to copy. Let's grab this one on the right first. So I can just do that. Copy, paste. Over here. Get another block void. Over here. Okay. That will be the plan. So we're moving through all of this stuff, having a grand old time, right? And I think I can probably erase this for now. We might not need all of that. Um, we could then do another one of these, where we have to go up and over. Um. I don't want to do this then. Like that. Then, looks so like that's going to be another uh, one of these little guys here. That look better. Okay, that look better. We'll do that. Um, let me do that again here. I'll have to change the variables and all that stuff, but that's fine. Um, and then I guess I have room for another one. Just one more of them. One, two, three. We can go. Not that one. We can go there, and then this one. Yeah. And we can go. like this. Oh no, because I want to do that and that. So this one will be this one? Yeah. There we go. Okay, now everything matches up nice and Gucci. I guess. Okay. So that'll be our basic outline for the conveyor belt. And so let's grab a couple more of the block voids, put them in the way of the track, simple as that. Boop, boop. Okay, so let's just finish making this um, conveyor belt thing. Boop, boop, boop. Set all these to force of one. First one, we want to go to the left. Shit. I just thought of something. But let's deal with that later. So we'll center the block, do 180. Do 180, go to the left. This one's going down. Down, down, and it's going down. Uh, down is negative 80, right? Or negative 90, whatever it all is. So let's copy this one, but I can paste it here and here. And we'll just take those and remove the center block option. I'm just gonna copy this block. We're gonna have it be zero. I'm gonna go to the right. I'm gonna snap. This one is also going to snap again. There we go. All right. Yeehaw! That's gonna be our, our, our basic course. So we're gonna get a block push, and we'll get a pressure plate here that spawns a block. So we'll block, trigger once, no exit trigger. Um, 
I have the block spawn down here, so it's still kind of close. Uh, then I move the, no, and not yet moved the spawn and end points. So let's do that now. All right. So tap that, move the block, push it along here. And then before I get to this block void, you're going to need to manipulate it somehow into uh, changing the direction. But the thing that I was like, uh-oh, uh, I realized in this, um, the problem we're seeing is when we undo the thing that we reset, we're just assuming that we're going left, right, or up, or down. We're not um, potentially changing it uh, from right to the left, and then going up and down, for example. Like if we, th if we have a right conveyor belt and we go up, it's not going to undo it. Um, <coughs> so what we are going to have to do is make a change. Do our code again. That's fine. It's going to be barely an inconvenience, he says, knowing it's going to be full well an inconvenience. So I'm just going to copy all of this on the undo. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to copy this, paste it down here, um, and we're going to create a new string called original direction. Okay. So rather than flip direction, we're going to use original direction here. And I'm just going to copy that uh, original direction. So I can just do this and that and that and that. So this will have it be uh, original direction and a changed direction. So the flip the direction is going to be, of course, just to that direction, obviously. Um, but yeah. Incidentally, conveyor belt reset conveyor. Okay, that doesn't matter then. All right, so. Ugh. It means we're gonna have to change some stuff here on these. Uh, so this one, uh, I guess we're not doing anything pressure plate related right now, so it doesn't matter. Uh, this one, I think we will have to click center block on these or else it won't necessarily work as I intended to. There we go. Okay, so uh, before we go any further with this level, we need to go back to our levels that use the conveyor belt flip uh, so that we can uh, correct this problem. So I think this one uses it, yeah? We need to find our pressure plate here that does the conveyor belt manipulation. Okay, so the original conveyor belt is going down. I think that's the only one that changes the conveyor belt on this level, so that's great. Uh, does this one have a conveyor belt changer? It does not. Does this one have a conveyor belt changer? It does not. Singularity has a number of them, so... Uh, wait. Let me use levers, so I think that's fine. All right, the reason that it worked, because we, um, the reason the Singularity one worked is because we were using the levers, not these. Also, the lever script just reminded me that I need to do this um, when we undo the trigger on each, on each one. Um, so conveyor to manipulate. We need to clear the colliding objects with it just to make sure it's, uh, when we reset it, it's, it's fine. Okay, so we'll do that. And then also in the, uh, the conveyor belt thing here, when we reset, um, yeah, that's not going to work either now. So we're going to have to do, uh, this is going to be original direction. that. So instead of direction to move here for the reset thing, we want to use 
original direction like that. And we can just copy and paste this here again. We'll have to change the values because right's going to be zero, left is going to be 180, that one's going to be 90, and this one's going to be negative 90. So that should take care of the lever reset script again. Um, making sure that one works. And then in the pressure plate one, we're not doing anything here. We just have to manipulate the levers again here. So these ones should be simple. Uh, left, right, up, down. This one, original direction was moving left. This one, original direction was moving right. And this one, original direction was moving up. Easy enough to deal with that one. Uh, and our other level that had it is the one that had a bunch of conveyor belts with the ice, I think. Let me just double check the rest of these. Yeah, so this one here, uh, we were using pressure plates to manipulate the directions here. So the original direction for this one, the bear belt one is that one. This one would have been, I think all of them just go to down, right? Because there's none that are facing a different direction for the pressure plates here. So let's just find all the pressure plates and their original direction is going to be down. Simple enough. Thank God it's simple enough, because if it wasn't, that was going to be a huge pain in the ass. is just uh you press a lock into it right okay cool you can save that and that's the only time i think this is the first time that we used the pressure plates to like switch conveyor belts so i don't think we have to do it for any other maps right right yeah, this was just the destroyer it spawns destroyer and okay perfect okay so that that's fine We've, we've completed what we've needed to do. Um, excellent. So let's go ahead and create our pressure plates that we're going to be uh, manipulating. So first, we want to do one object. We want to trigger it once. We want no exit trigger. Uh, and then we're going to flip direction. The original direction is going to be going right for this one. We want this one to then go down. That's gonna be the first conveyor belt here. And then I'm just gonna copy paste, copy paste, because the second one's gonna be the same. This one, however, is gonna be the third area, which is going to want us to go left, and the original direction is going to be down. Um, and for the last one, this one here, we want to flip going up, and the original one's going left. That's going to be all of the pressure plates that we need to manipulate these. So, yeah, okay. Excellent. All right, that's what we have for that stuff. So let's go ahead and actually assign these uh, their particular components. This is conveyor belt eight. Oop. Then we have conveyor belt number 14. The second one. Then we have conveyor belt number 23. For that one. And the last one is conveyor belt 42. Not 42, I'm sorry. Um, 30. There we go. Let me just double check this. Is the right one? Yeah, 23. Okay. Perfect. All right. So we have the pressure plates. We just need to put them somewhere to do something. I could just put them up against here. 
and have that just kind of sorted out. Um, but... Hmm. I think for the first one, um, it might be best to have it close by since it is triggering quite quickly. This one we could put here. This one we could put... Um, crap. Mm. Here. And then this one we could put down here? I think? Okay. And then we could sort of seal these off. Like this, maybe. open I can actually do this a little bit better that okay All right, so what we'll do here is we will take a conveyor belt here and we will take another conveyor belt here and another conveyor belt back here Although I don't, I don't like that. Hold on. Let's actually make this go in order, so it's just easier to deal with. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right. And so from here, we're going to use ice to just kind of slide the object across the conveyor belts. There's no way to go around corners with ice, however, that's fine. That, then we need one more conveyor belt here, which is just going to go to the left. I'm gonna leave it at two. We're gonna have it center the block. And this needs to be 180. 180, there we go. All right, perfect. So. What's gonna happen is the player is going to move the block from here somewhere down to here. And it's going to hit uh, one of these things, whatever. I'm going to take each of these conveyor belts, however, and they're going to they're going to have the center block going on. Uh, this one we're going to have it go to the right to begin with. This one's also be going to the right. This one is also going to be going to the. Uh, Right. Uh, 
Okay. We could make it more interesting, though. Ooh, should I do that? seem like fun. We're gonna get rid of all this. Leave. It's with that. Okay. And then let's grab all this ice. We're gonna copy it up. Uh, actually, before we do that, before we do that, um, let's continue making the ice field here. Okay, let's do that. Perfect, okay, and then we'll just copy a couple more times over to here. I think I'll add a thing here. Um, actually, let's do this. Uh, like that, and then that. Go there. All right. And then we can just grab this and slam this into the wall here. Okay. So, what this will do is we're going to basically make it so the player moves a block, pushes it, and it's going to go to a, a centralized sort of, uh, if we go right here, for example, it's going to be a... a lever. There's going to, there's going to be a, uh, a thing that operates this particular conveyor belt. I, um, probably a, a lever. And it's going to go left, right, up, down, whichever direction we want to shoot the particular thing in. And there we're going to use other conveyor belts to kind of shoot the, the thing off the ice and then onto conveyor belts. So, um, from this one, what we could do is have, we select this ice, we can delete it, but we can put a um, conveyor there. We can also get rid of this ice and put a conveyor here. So essentially what we'll do is we can you know, have this one go forward. Um, this conveyor belt will then be changed to go to one of these directions. Uh, this one will go up. And you can go, you know, fire to another direction or whatever, uh, like left or right, you know. Easy. Okay, so now that we have this stuff down, let's go ahead and fill out the ice course for it, shall we? Okay, we, we really have to, like, pay attention to what the hell we're doing here. So this is the end, except that it can move right. This one can move right and down this one um it is going to be the end except you can move left right and down you can't move up because the up is the end this one uh is going to be the end you can't move left but you can move right or down this one you can move uh down you can move right or left down, right, left. This one also down, right, left. Um, this is actually going to be the end as well, I just realized. So that was going to be the end because it's going to be the end for either side, but you can't move left or right. You can only move down for that one. This one you actually can't move right. So I forgot about that. Well, I was thinking there was ice underneath the conveyor belts. There is not. This is going to be the end. You can move right and down. Um, this one right here is going to be the end. And you can move left and down 
This one here is going to be the end. You can move left. This one is going to be the end. You can move left and up. And all of these, um, you can move up, you can move left, you can move right. Doesn't matter. And then this one, uh, you can move left, right, or up. Same with these, left, right, up, all good, because the end is not the pressure plate for this particular uh, case. Right, okay. And then these, I think this one, uh, nope, I have that one too, okay. I don't want to pass this one by. Uh, this one you can actually move every direction, so left, right, up, down. This one also, left, right, up, down. I'm actually going to copy um, these two here, so this one and that one, because all these ones in the middle are basically going to be left, right, up, down. Um, here, and then... I'm going to do individual blocks now, so that one's going to be every direction, this one's going to be every direction, this one's going to be every direction, the rest of them are going to have ends, except for that one. And that one is going to be every direction, that one's going to be every direction. Okay. Oops. Alright, so this one is going to be, you can move left, move every direction except for down. This one, you can move every direction except for left and down. Oops. Here is uh, right and up and down. And then again, up, right, down. Perfect. Okay. And we'll just copy. Oopsie. There we go. The ice is such a pain to like mess with. Okay, so this one's going to be the end. You cannot move right, but you can move left, up, and down. This one is the end. You cannot move left, but you can move right, up, and down. This one is the end. You cannot move up, but you can move down, left, and right. This one is going to be the end, but you can move um, every direction but up. And then last but not least, you can move every direction except for the right here. Yes, okay, perfect. So this should be everything that I have to do here um, for these guys. Now we have to do the levers, which is gonna be a pain. Um, I do think what I will do is create an empty called ice. And I'm just going to add all the ice into this, just so we have a easier time finding which conveyor belts we are messing with. Hmm. No, because there's just so many ice blocks. So. Okay, move that up there. Excellent. Okay. So now that we've added all the ice blocks in here, the player is essentially going to have some levers and stuff like that that they're going to be using to flip stuff around. Okay, so first, I think we'll want this lever. And is it all just these conveyor belts here? This little blob? Yeah, okay. So the main conveyor belt is going to be 52. Let's do 52 first. I think it's just object to change here, right? Um, always visible on start, is conveyor belt, direction to move, we want it to move up, original direction is down, or not down, it's right, there we go. So now, if we flip it, it should turn that conveyor belt going up, it can go down, uh, or if we turn it off, it should go back to the right, we believe. Well, we'll have to test this to make sure it works, but in theory, it should. Okay. Let's put this one, I guess, here. Because we're if we spawn a block, it's gonna spawn there. We can push it over and then up. And we need to push down and over. We need to have these blocks here. Here, let me uh just to mark out where we cannot place levers. 
easily get the blocks down into position. Okay. That area right there, no levers can go in. Everywhere else can have a lever, though. And we will need to basically use every single location. Okay. So, this one. This lever will have feeding this conveyor belt. But you know what? Maybe we don't. Maybe we just leave this one going up. And... We don't have a conveyor belt feeding to that one. This one also we'll just do that with. I don't want to have to make levers all over the place, right? That one's fine. I think that one will be fine. So really we'll just have the other ones. So 53. And then what's this one? 54 is all we're going to need to manipulate. So. Oh, I don't need this lever. Well, let's just delete it then. Move these two up a little bit. So they're easier to switch um, when we get there. So, okay, cool. So, this lever is going to turn this one to the uh, 53. I'm going to go up. So, up. The original direction is going to be down. We're going to have to switch this so it actually does point downward. Also, apparently I did not set the thing for this. Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, for all of these conveyor belts, we want them to center the block. Of course, of course. And then up, up, right, left. This one also we did not set, so it's going to go right. This one is going to go right. And that should be all of them set now. Perfect. Okay, so this lever up down. Boop, 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 boop. This lever is going to go starting left and then right. Let me just make sure that last one is correct now. Uh, yes, okay. So that should be all we have to do for this level in order to get stuff moving. So we'll actually test this out and see how it goes. First, let's delete these immovable blocks that we uh, have here. So that lever was this one. Okay, I think I got it. Cool, so. Let's... If the player... I guess if the player does go in here, they basically just have to hit a wall and then they can go boom, 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 boom get back out. I don't have to add a pit anywhere. So that's fine. Um, excellent. Okay. So first, first, let's go ahead and uh, we'll add all of our, our stuff into this thing. So we don't have to do too much here. Uh, pressure plates, we'll do those. And we'll do the levers. We don't have to worry about any uh, portals or yada yada yada. We do have a gate, though. There's that. Block voids don't matter. Air belts don't have anything to do here because they just get reset via the levers or the uh, pressure plates. <coughs> and there's no pre-static blocks. Yes, okay, perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's hit save, and um, what should our dialogue here be? Welcome to another lovely experiment. Like in previous experiments, you'll be put under pressure to perform. Let's see if you can figure things out. Hmm. I was thinking about something else. 
What if we add another pressure plate here? And it opens up a gate here. So you can't just do this puzzle first. You actually have to have a block in here. But... Ah, uh, how would I... Like, because obviously you could just fail the first time. The gate would be open, and then... It wouldn't, you know, do anything. Um... Hmm. I'm gonna do that anyway. Okay. Because it does... It, it does seem neat. Um, the pressure plate, pressure plate, prefab. One object. We're gonna trigger it once. We're gonna do no exit trigger. And, uh... Yeah, then we're just gonna take the gate, put it there. Okay. Like I was thinking, what if I put like a pressure plate under the block void, but I don't think it would trigger before the block gets eaten. So it doesn't really help. Yeah. I would have to have something that, like, resets these levers whenever you like, were to push something across. But that would be so much more extra logic just for, like, a very simple thing. I think this is fine. The player will, you know, be forced. They, they can play around down here, see what these levers do, and then they can, you know, flip this, and then they, and they have to figure out trial and error anyway um, in order to get that. But at least with this... I just wouldn't be able to just send blocks and trigger all of those right away, you know? We'll have to figure out, while there's a block moving, what one does what. And sure, after the first one goes through, they can then you know, mess around and do whatever, but that's fine. Okay, so we just need to add these uh, gates. Or the gate and the pressure plate we just added. Sorry, not multiple. Now we can save. Let's hit play. So, level starts. We can hit this, and we know our only uh, source of what to do here is to push this here. That's going to open that, and we need to... Oh, that completely... Does it happen to all of them? Something ain't right here, hold on. I don't think I... Uh... I don't think I did the levers right. Well, first of all, this one I did not set as is conveyors. Um, how does the lever thing work? So, on update, you check. If F key is down, you check if it's multiple objects, do the multiple object thing. Otherwise, you do that and that and that. But multiple objects, okay, so is conveyor belt. It has to be multiple objects. Yep, classic me being just an idiot, so multiple objects. Which means the conveyor change thing, we have to change the uh starting state doesn't matter for these, yeah? Okay. Um, so object to change is conveyor belt 52 here. This one, conveyor belt 53. And conveyor belt 54 goes in here. Okay, so now it should work. Um, and not have the thing just turn off and on. Like, uh... What an idiot. Okay. Let's try the levers first before we... Now it's here. Okay. That's going up. Now it's going down. That one works. And that one works, but this one... Does not work. Why?
Hip is activated. Else, okay, because I used the direction to move down here. So this should be original direction. Original direction. Okay. Now that we've done that, it should work now. Certainly it should work, he says. Close, but no banana. When we turn it on, it goes to the right. What? Or should move up. I just have a number wrong here somewhere. <clears throat> ah, I do. Right here. The, uh, when activated, up should be 90, down is negative. Uh, wait, what? Bro. What the hell was I doing when I wrote this code? Right, hold on. Let me look at the level that actually uses this, that word, because I feel like I am just an idiot right now. Hey, lovers, what did I do? So the direction to move is left, and you're dealing with 9 and 10. So yeah, you want to you you want to move them left so that they point to the left. So Y is direction to move like this. Again, how did this work for that level? I do not get it. That's just insane. Also, apparently I did not change the no, I do. Change it here. Oh, whatever. Let's test it now! Again, I don't know how this level works. It literally makes no sense that it worked, but now when I'm doing it, a similar thing, it's not working. activated equals true. Uh oh. I have them flip, don't I? We can just change this to false. It does make more sense now. I think about it. Oh, whatever. That would make sense why they work. Okay, so now if I come down here and flip it, it should go up and then right. And then up and then down. And then left and then right. Okay. Sweet. So um, before we actually get a block moving, let's get this set up for the correct paths here. 
Because I know where it's going to go. We can push this onto here. And then... Yeah. Okay, so those conveyor belts are moving. Too slow. Or too fast. Especially with the, uh, the snapping onto them. So... We want to grab these ones, and then up. And we'll go 0 0.5. Let's see if that helps us get this timed correctly. I guess I could just get a block down here and ready so I don't have to push it. Yeah. I'll just flip things the way that they should go. But let's get couple of blocks ready to go here. We don't have to wait a bunch. Okay. We're going to push this. We're going to trigger that pressure plate. We can then push this. Oh god. I'm going with it too. Oh no. Oh no. Shit. Well. Reset level. That one and that one. The ice really likes to just take it as soon as you touch it. I always forget that it like literally will just like suction you into it. And, like eat your whole head. Okay, so let's push this guy. Let's push this guy. Will it make it in time? Nope. We're gonna go even slower, huh? Okay. 0 0.25. Let's try that. <laughs> Must switch them. Oh. But now if we send one, I just want to check, make sure. Oh my god, they're, they're so slow. I might just remove that pressure plate at the top and stuff. God, I wish I could make it so that the uh, cube moved more smoothly to the middle. Rather than just like snapping like that. Oh, that worked. I just gotta do this. And it's, it's just if it gets, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just if it gets too if it gets onto the pressure plate before it happens. Yeah. No, I think 0 0.5 might just work. It might not be... Like, you're, you're definitely going to lose a block in the beginning, but it's it's what's necessary to prevail, right? Because a normal person, they're going to, you know, see a pressure plate over there that's going to trigger a block, and then going to, you know, Fumble around with levers and stuff until that block gets eaten. They're gonna lose the first one anyway. But then they're gonna have the next one ready. Push right onto there. And then while they're working for this next one. They're gonna have all this stuff set up. get into place way before oh, that conveyor belt didn't snap. Maybe I'll turn off snapping and just see how it looks. What? I 
gonna keep snapping for the iced blocks. But the ones that are not, let's turn off snapping. And we'll see how it goes. Um, and let's, re let's increase the speed back to one for them. Okay. Um, hey, Ice Block, why did you decide... Oh, because apparently I did not set this stuff? Pretty sure I did, buddy. But whatever you say... I clearly remember having to click this guy. Alright, let's just do an ice check. Didn't I just look at that one and it did have his end? Okay, buddy. Okay. Okay. So now it should work. As we intended to. Sometimes, I tell you. So that one's going to trigger... Let's flip these. And we'll just toss that into there. Okay, and then we'll flip this one back. And I'm going to push this guy and get it going. We can then get a block started on the conveyors here. Still moving along. Nice, it does just barely skirt. It's great. Oops, oops, ah oh, man. The wrong lever. Wait, where'd that? Hmm. Did it actually get to that point on the on the right and I just failed to theater? it or... Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. No, let me just go up. Yep, okay. Alright, so it's going, it's going, it's having fun, it's having a blast. Skirting around all the traps here. Start some trial and error. Here we are. Gate opens and we are let in to the exit in about two minutes. That's just because I knew what I was doing. It might take the normal player a little bit longer. <laughs> That's totally fine. Totally fine. Okay. So I think with this, we're good. Right, we're, we don't have to worry about anything else. Let's go ahead and add this to our levels. Open up our previous level and add that one to the next level tab. All right, we are burning through these. Um, great stuff. There's, there's one thing that I really want to check into doing. I don't know if there is, but... I might look up colors that colorblind people can see without issue because I'd hate to make a level and have people who could not see the levels properly uh, to like differentiate certain things. At least like the level border and the, uh, the items, you know, to see if there's like any colors out there that are like good that the player could, you know, uh, look at. I mean, Obviously, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to spend the time to like make it so if you are colorblind, it changes setting and then it changes the entire map and all that kind of stuff. I just I don't have that kind of time and whatnot to do that. I'm just a single guy. But if I could just, you know, replace these objects 
with you know different colored objects to make things easier. 100% I would do that. I don't know about the actual like level things. I think I feel like before I've been able to like copy in a a, a picture that's been updated and it's just overwritten things previously. So I don't know if like if I name something the same name and drag it in if it just overwrites or not. I'm gonna test that out on like a normal block and we can see. Um, actually, why don't we just do that right now? Let's take the movable block and let's open it in our paint.net. Might as well test it, you know, we're just chilling. Get rid of that. So what if we take this block and let's make it well, let's just make it like a weird pink color. Like that. Okay, so we're going to go File. And I'm just going to hit Save. Screw it. And I'm just going to undo it here. And then what I'll do is I'll just take it and move it over to here. So it didn't, it didn't do what I wanted. But maybe it will if I were to do this, and then if I were to rename it, so that it doesn't have a one there. Hmm. There's got to be a way to do it, right? What do I have to have it open here? What did that do? Oh, it just opened a picture of it. Okay, that doesn't help me at all. Um, open in Explorer. So what if, if I... Okay. I'm going to, in, in the Explorer window here, that's the project folder, I'm going to delete movable block, and then I'm going to rename the other one to movable block. I'm just going to delete that there. And if I click over here, it did that, but now if I go to my prefabs, it, it did update. So I go to a level, and I don't know, just say like this one. It did update it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it would be very easy to, to replace all of these colored blocks here. So let's go back to here. We'll hit save. I will close out of this. And if I just, once again, drag my, my, uh, my block here, I hit replace. I actually want to copy that back because it actually just took the thing out of the directory there. All right, and then if I click this again, they all changed back. Okay, cool. So that's, I can very easily update things just by changing the name. Um, so for any of these assets, if I can figure out if there's like a specific range of colors that everyone, regardless of whether or not they have certain color blindness, can see, I can just update the blocks and the walls and stuff with whatever I want uh, very easily. So that should be very simple to do. Excellent. I'll just have to deal with that. Excellent. Cool. All right. So moving along, if we come back over to here, we have a level where you push gates. Cool. All right. So next, we want to make using destroyer blocks pushed over ice to destroy gates that are holding back movable blocks that then get pushed out by conveyors onto ice that slide to a depositor. Did you understand that? I did. Okay. So, essentially what, what that means is what we want to do is have for example, a wall of like gates or something, right? Um, that we push 
a destroyer block across. And then the destroyer block destroys a gate that's pushing, like if we were to look at a previous level, for example, with the uh, this one destroyer block. Rather than a destroyer block being here, it'd be like a normal movable block. And you would use a destroyer block to push it into this, destroy that gate so that the normal block could get out. It's essentially what we're talking about doing. So, real quick, it's been about two hours. We're in a good place to take a little quick break. Go ahead and stand up, walk around, go to the bathroom, get a drink if you need it, stay hydrated and all that, and I uh, will be right back. All right, I am back. Welcome, welcome. 
Welcome back, everyone. I was, uh, I checked my voicemail too, because I, I got a voicemail while I was streaming. The phone didn't even ring or anything. And, uh, wouldn't you know it? It was one of those voicemails where it just screeches at you like the old dial up tone for some reason. <laughs> Fun times. I don't know what the hell that was about. Sometimes get those. And then they're just like scam call things where they're, uh, automated voice thing just freaks out because they can't get a real person or something. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I don't care. Okay. So to remind y'all before break, when we were going to use destroyer blocks, pushed over ice to destroy gates that are holding back movable blocks that then get pushed out by conveyors onto ice that then slide into depositor. A mouthful in it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, spawn point goes up there, end point we're gonna put down here, and we are going to do a, uh, first of all, make sure we're on the correct tile map. We're gonna do that, that, and then this, and then we need to just grab a depositor from our free fab. Wait, we can't do that. The depositor has to be like up and down, unfortunately. We can just do this though. That's fine. That's fine too. All right. So our depositor here. Let's just go with like 50 value for now. It's not going to be actually 50. That would be insane. Um, but essentially what we need to do is we need to make it so that the destroyer blocks can't go here, but they can go anywhere else we need them to go, right? So I guess the first thing we want to do probably is get a pressure plate that spawns destroyer blocks here. We will check the one object. We'll have no exit trigger. We're going to ignore destroyers so that it can't be destroyed by destroyer blocks, obviously, because that'd be silly. Um, that's our first little setup there. So next, we need to make some ice paths that can lead us to going into the uh, depositor here. So I think we'll use ice and just to kind of make a centralized thing here. We need to get rid of that one and put it on a conveyor belt that goes to the right. And we're going to center the block. Okay. So that will gonna send that down there. We'll then get another ice block on top of it. And for all this ice down here, um, we're going to select... Um, well, actually, not all of it. This is going to be the end but it can move right. This one, it's going to be the end, but it can move right. Actually, that one should be the left. Should fit up. There we go. And for the rest of these, all these five, they can move left or right, it doesn't matter. Uh, so actually what we'll do is we will extend our little thing here to like that. Now it's a nice rectangular area for us to work with up here. Okay, so the goal is we're going to need conveyor belts that are going to push out movable blocks that are then going to get sent to something that's going to fire them into this hole, which should then uh, fix stuff up. So we're going to put can move up. We're going to say is end because there's going to be more stuff above this. So that's going to be that ice block completed. Um, now keep in mind, we can, we can use the, the levers we can use pressure plates to turn and flip um, all of the uh, conveyor belts that we place on here as well. That's going to be a thing. So I guess what we can do right now <clears throat> is just create some cages for uh, the 
the movable blocks. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a couple of nodes here on our uh, corners. Like this, and then we're just going to boop and boop. That way we have corner areas, and then we can just do this and that, and then I can copy that, just kind of go like that, and we can do that, that, and copy that, and go boop, boop, boop. Boop. And then down here I can do another one. Boop, boop. Okay, and then let's do just one over here as well. Like boop boop. Okay. Then we just need all the gates. So gate goes here. Gate goes here. Before we touch anything else, let's go ahead and go to the assets. And we're going to select this. Change the sprites on these guys. There we go. Now we can copy these wherever we want. and be able to manipulate them like this. Okay. Back to horizontal one. Like that, okay. Cool. So now we have kind of a, uh, a jail cell, essentially. And we're gonna grab this conveyor belt and I'm going to put it here and here and then we have to like maybe flip it around for everything else. Let's do that. Um, actually, these don't need to center the block, so we grab these guys. I'm gonna uncheck center. Yeah, apparently I just flipped that one block around for no reason. Great. I thought I copied it, but apparently I did not. Okay. Anyway, we can then. Move these blocks here, and here, you gotta do the top and the bottom. I'm gonna get one of each in there. We're gonna do negative 90, or I guess 90. I always do the wrong one for up and down, I don't know why. It's, it's insane. This one's gonna go down, this one's gonna go up. Copy, paste, copy, paste, and copy, paste. Okay. Then we need to grab seven again so we can copy, paste it. And then grab both of those. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Okay. Now we can go ahead and add in the blocks. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, which means we can then go to the depositor and type in eleven for the value. I can hit number nine so my guy quits face palm in there. Okay, so the goal is to get each of these into here to destroy this without the depositor hitting it. So I think what we can do, we have, or the other depositor, the destroyer block hitting it. So sort of in the middle of all of these, let's add another conveyor belt here. And we're gonna set this default layer. What, what is the ice layer? Anyway, this one's going to be kind of in the center. I'm going to select all of these um, above background. So this one's going to be above background one. If I can select the right thing. There we go. All right, this one's going to go negative 90. Yeah. It's going to go down. And we're going to have it ignore destroyers. So this way, if we do throw a block, if we do like toss a block and it uh, hits this path, it's not going to be sent downward. This is going to be the, the end goal for all of the um, 
blocks, right? <laughs> All of these blocks are going to have to hit this conveyor belt, which are then going to be sent down and go through here. So very easy. I also might as well just start copying this ice and then, oops, not what I wanted to do. Um, I copy this ice, I can just sort of copy paste and move it around uh, everywhere that I need this same type of ice, which is omnidirectional ice. Then I can just select this one and paste that here. Select that one, paste it there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and here. Then I can go um, boop and boop, and I can just start copying a couple more. Then go boop, boop. Get a lot more. You know, and then I can just go boop and boop, copy and paste, put those down here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that's going to be our, our main IC platform. Now I will have to add the outer edges of all of these, which is going to be just a pain. Yeah. So real quick, we're going to make an empty object before we go any further. Great empty. We're going to call it ice once again. We're going to collect all the ice. We're going to move it in to the ice section. We're going to move the ice section up further. There, so I can collect the rest of the ice. No, let's do this one first. Here we go. Lost that there. All right, so now we have a section that is just for the ice, because the ice does not get manipulated at all or anything get used with it. So we are just peachy keen. All right. Gentlemen, it's time to do the outer edge of the ice. Let's copy an ice block. All right. This one, it, it's not going to be an end because you're going to just hit the wall. Um, it is, however, going to allow you to go up, left, and right. So I'll then copy this one. I'll then copy this one. He says not copying it. I'll just copy it to the ones that are also the, the same. Where you can go up, left, and right. All the way over to here. Okay. And then we can also grab this to put it here. And here. And here. Because then we can grab these, and this is actually going to be an end. If it hits a conveyor belt. I could freaking copy paste properly. Okay. Now let's do the two in the over here. So this is going to be an end. Cannot move left. Can move up. Can move right. Paste another one. Put it down here. This is not going to be an end, but you can move up and right. Uh, then we're going to copy this one. This one you can move uh, up, left, and down. I don't know why this one was missing a block there, but it's a hallway piece. This one we cannot move left, but it's not an end. That's fine. Um, this one, however, is going to be an end. You cannot move left. This one is going to be an end. You cannot move left or up. This one is going to be an end. You cannot move up. All of these are actually going to be ends. You cannot move up. Okay, just to get those settled and out of the way. Cool, okay, so now we can take this block, paste it. You can't move up, but you can move left, right, up, and down, but it's not the end. Again, you control C, control V, and it's just not, not liking me for some reason, man. Okay, this one, uh, we can move up, we cannot move to the right. Go. All right. Um, then let's grab this one. We're gonna move it over. 
we're gonna have is end equal to that. Okay. I would do the same thing for all of these after I freaking copy it correctly. For this one, you cannot move to the right. Great, okay. Then we can copy this one again. It's down here, but allow it to move up. Okay, and that should be all the corner pieces except for these ones down here, which we'll get to now. Um, not the depositor, please. All right, so this one, not the end, but you can't move up. This one, no, 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 no. This one is not the end, but you cannot move up or to the right. You cannot move down or to the right. And that is all the icy areas completed. We no longer have to worry about anything happening there. There is one concern that I have with the conveyor belts, however, that are near the ice. Um, and that is, if a destroyer block gets pushed onto that, it might push the destroyer block back. So, let's gather our conveyor belts, every single one of them. And we want all of them. All of them are going to <coughs> ignore destroyers. All these ones, anyway. The rest of the conveyor belts we'll be making will not. Okay, so now that we've made the ice field, what we need to do next is create paths for all of these to get out of. Obviously, this one is going to get shot across, hit here, get shot across, and just go down. That's easy enough, right? Okay, but the rest of them, how the fuck I did that? But the rest of them, um, we're going to want to do something to get them all to kind of go to a central point, right? Um, how do we do that is the question. Well, easy enough, these three will get shot up here, and you can do whatever you want with them in this area. This one is going to get shot over to here, which is then going to land there. Mm-hmm. So I think what we could do, if I get a conveyor belt, and we're gonna make this one go above background one, this one's gonna go right, like that, and ignore destroyers, of course. That way it goes over to here, down to there, and into the socket, right? Okay. Now let's grab this. Put a, put another one here. This one's gonna go up. It's also gonna ignore destroyers and it's gonna go 90 degrees. And so now what will happen is I'm pretty sure you can like get these blocks to go down. And then if you, as the slime go like over to here, you can push them. They'll go in here, in through there, right? I believe that is how we can get those blocks out with minimal effort, of course. Um, and so this block will come over here and we can easily just do whatever we want with it. Um, I might put just a block here also to the right, like this one. So that way, you can uh, push all the blocks that go up here, just down here. So take care of these three, that one, all of those. This one already is taken care of. This one gets sent over to here, which then you could um, go from here, down to here, push it down, go over, down, over, push it all. So those are all the blocks we need to get the blocks uh, in, right? Right, so let's hit play. And I just wanna see if I spawn a destroyer block, I put it here, I push it down. It's gonna go down that way. 
And then I can just go down this way. And now if I push it over here... Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind, but I suppose that works. Not exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, let's try that again. Let's, um, let's try this block first. We'll just send it across all the way over there and see what happens when that uh, block gets released. Let's just check the physics of our stuff first. So it's going to slide all the way across, which is exactly what we want to have happen. So now we can take this block, we can move it up here, and we'll just get this one out of the way right away. Push it down. It'll... I guess because it's right. I don't think I can do that. Fuck. What if I. Okay. I think because the logic here is not sound. So what I think we need to do is on our conveyor belts, we need to have a um, conveyor belt script. We need to do serialized field bool ignore sliding like that. And then on trigger enter to D, we want to check. For, uh, I guess first what we just want to do is do if, oh, we can't do that there, because it's not a generic. Okay, um, for the player, we get player move, we want to check if, ignore, not to ignore destroyer, ignore sliding equals true. We want to then do pm dot is sliding equals false. I believe is sliding just kind of does our thing here, right? So let's test this one out, where our our player is the thing that's sliding. Got an error. Freaking graph error. Ah, oh, I hate it so much. Okay, so we're just gonna go down and see what happens. I'm gonna let my hand go off. Okay, so it didn't. Oh. You know what would help if I actually check the ignore sliding box? So before we checked the sliding, what we saw is that we just slipped right past it. What happens if we don't do that? As soon as we hit it, we uh, don't ignore sliding anymore. Excellent, okay. Good to know, good to know. Okay, that's what we wanna have happen. So on these, we wanna ignore sliding. This one, ignore sliding. Uh, this one, ignore sliding. Okay, uh, this one doesn't actually have one underneath it, so it does not matter if we ignore sliding or not. It really doesn't matter. In fact, for this one, we don't even have to really have a a block underneath here, but we can just to test things out. Okay. So we know that it works for the player. I don't know why I hit play because we have to add code for other things. So we're going to copy this. If it's a movable block, we want to first. Ignore sliding, we want to do MB is sliding equals false. Now let's open up the movable block script to see what exactly happens. When is sliding is false, vector three gets set to zero. So that means it's going to just stop immediately. So I think that will work. Now, 
are conveyor, or not conveyor belt. I don't really care about the rest of them. I'm not gonna, I don't think, use this much. Let's make a thing here. Um, in conveyor script, is sliding only affects player, movable block, and destroyer block. I'm just gonna make a note. Uh, if we do need to change it, we can come back. However, we're not gonna do much thing. So I can't put that one there. I need to put it after the declaration. So DB is sliding equals false. Um, once again, the destroyer block is one of those things that I'm not too sure what um, is the deal with these. So, yeah, well, the destroyer block might be a little iffy because I don't think I don't think that makes sense. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. Why don't we test out the destroyer block first, so we can see exactly what happens. Alternatively, I could just have the uh, destroyer block, or I could change this so the conveyor belts down below, they all, uh, yeah, nothing happens. Of course nothing happens. Oh, what did they happen? Just to check, that one did have, uh, yeah. Oh, but it's also said to ignore destroyers. I don't think I wanted that one to be ignoring destroyers. This one either. Then this one. I also don't want to ignore destroyers. I just want this one too, basically. So you can't get a destroyer block in there. Okay, now let's try it. But first, let's get a... I want to test the movable block one as well. We'll try this first. Okay. It's going to go and destroy that one. I'm going to send this one. It might not be centered enough. It might hit that corner there. Yep. Perfect. We got our... Block back. I think what happened with that block down on the bottom is that since this is not set to ignore sliding, it slid and then it just kind of hit the conveyor belt and went down and changed its sliding course. Like that kind of. But why did it not? Oh, it didn't center a block. That's why these were not set up to center the block. They should be. All of them should be set up to center the block. Okay. All right, so now I'll try this one more time. I swear to God, the, uh, the destroyer block snapped onto that one, though, didn't it? I don't know why I pushed that down there like that. Uh, that was stupid. We'll push that down. It snaps on, slides across. Destroys that. This block comes out. It should snap to this conveyor belt, then it'll slide down there, snap to that one, slide out there, go in the hole, hole in one! <laughs> it's kind of like golfing. Okay, so I guess let's just try this and figure out exactly where we need to have... Shit. I don't think I should have been able to walk out of that, but okay. We'll just figure out exactly where we need to have... Um, extra belts to help our destroyer blocks get into place. So that one's going to come out. Um, I want to move, first of all, here. I don't want to go over here. Oh, yeah, I fucked myself with the conveyor there. Oh no, I can't unstuck. Damn it. Fine. Here you go, player. 
Okay. We'll just be careful not to do it exactly on the edge then. Well, let's do that. Okay. We go up. We will push the destroyer block. Destroyer block, why are you such a pain in the ass to deal with, huh? Huh? You little shit. That's fine. Okay, so we realize we, we cannot push the destroyer block and that kind of stuff. Okay. Great. Great. So we have... Uh, we can destroy one, two, three, four of those quite easily. Um... How would I destroy this one, is the question. And I was really banking on uh, being able to, like, put the destroyer block back up against here and then push it, uh, like, up. I mean, that would do that one, but, again, not for the rest of these. I might have to... I was going to say, I might have to have the destroyer block destroy, like, a lever or a pressure plate to trigger the gate, but you can't do that. So once we use some of these blocks to free the other blocks, we can get one, two, three, four blocks with the destroyer block quite easily. Um, even one, two, three, four, five. That's one, two, three, four, five. And then we could have them all basically get over to here. Well, that one would go in directly. So we have four we can use. Um, so let me check this. Okay, that did work. Although it did kind of fuck up the uh, thing here. So I think if I, if I go down, hmm, no. that's unfortunate. Okay, so I guess from further away direction, maybe? Let's try this along. So if we were to put the destroyer block, well, we can't put it there because that's going to be bad. So if we just put it here, and then I go down, I get pushed right back. Shit. Okay, that's fine. We'll have to go here. I can kind of get here and push it there. Then I'm just going to keep going until it stops. <clears throat> so that I can go like whoosh. Get away. Then we can just go like boosh, and then boosh, oops, boosh, boosh, I said. And then I can go up, over, we can push this baby down, push over here, yeet, and then it stopped right there for some reason. Hold on, what, what the fuck's wrong with you? Move up. Take a move. Is it because the conveyor belt ignores sliding? But that wouldn't... That hasn't been an issue before. You piece of shit.
What is wrong? What is wrong? Move up, can move right. It's not the end. So what's your problem, mate? Anyway, I'm going to go to my player move script real quick. Let me put this down here real quick. I might copy what I have for the player sliding into this guy. So if sliding equals true, we want to check. Well, no, because. the ice block changes that, but if it hits a wall, this loss is going to be zero regardless, right? So I guess I can just copy this and paste it there. Block isn't moving. We can try that. It's not going to hurt anything. So we'll do that. Um, watch it just break all knowledge that we have about those things moving. Anyway, I guess that block getting stuck there doesn't really matter because we can just come back and move it anyway. Um, I think I'll just destroy this ice and I'm going to take this conveyor belt and remove ignore sliding. We're gonna make this block an end block. You can't move left. This block is going to be an end block, and you cannot move down. Just to eliminate some factors there. Um, I might get rid of this ice stuff as well here. Here. If I can select it properly. No, the ice. No, you get hidden. You get deleted. Where's the conveyor belt? I turned invisible. There we go. Okay. Which means all of these that are touching it need to be turned to his end. Cannot move down. You and you. His end. Cannot move up. You. His end. Cannot move left. You. His end. Cannot move right. I'll take care of those. Okay. And then I can, I guess, delete the is sliding thing off of these guys. More sliding. Um, okay. But that one's still. I, I do need this one here. Since it is ignoring destroyers, it does have to have an ice block underneath it so the ice. So the destroyer block can continue moving. That's just the, the long and short of that one. Okay. So, how do we get destroyers to the other locations? Well, I suppose what we could do is here, we can get rid of this ice block potentially and have it have a conveyor belt. It's going to go left to begin with. We need it to go 180 degrees. Um, it is going to center the block. It's not going to ignore sliding because we're going to change all these things to be his end. Can't move right. His end oops, cannot move up. And this one 
Cannot move down. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll add a. Hmm. I want to add some levers, but I think if I do, it'll take up room. Fortunate. So I need to have this area clear. I think I can get away with putting a lever here. That controls that conveyor belt. And if I remember correctly, the lever has to have multiple of these things. So always visible, multiple object is conveyor belt. Direction to move is gonna be up. Original direction is going to be left. So we can now toss a block down here, it'll go up, destroy that one. I'll take care of that one. I could I could just do the same with mm. Wait, actually rather than having this conveyor belt go left, I can have it go down. And We can start it going down, maybe 90, like that. So now we push the destroy block here, it goes down, push that over there, over there, over there. And that could get that one. Um, would be great. Although we could already do that by just pushing a destroyer block down from here, but that's whatever. Um, but anyway, you flip that one up, it gets that, and you want to flip the lever again real quick so that block goes down here, so you can come over here and push it over to here to get it up to there, to there, to there. Got it. Okay. Alternatively, I could... I could move this block over to here, which would free up some space for me putting a lever here. It's fine. It's fine. Screw it. It's fine. Um, I can then remove this ice block here, put another lever and a uh, thing here, so it points up and down, or I guess up and right. We'll do right. I'm gonna center the block. Did I center the block on the last conveyor? I did. Okay. And then we'll grab this ice block. It's gonna be the end because you cannot move right. This ice block you can now no longer move left. This one you cannot move down. And this one you cannot move up. Okay. Add the X again. Please. And then another lever. I guess I can put another lever here. It's going to be really tight for this, but uh, try it. So direction to move is going to be up. Original direction is right. Easy as that. And that's those two done. Now we have these three, which is going to be the biggest pain in the ass. Well, essentially three more levers. So a destroyer block here, you can just barely get away with it if you look at this. If we put a destroyer block here, we can get away with doing like that, and then I can, oh well, apparently not. I'm gonna say we could try and get it like that and then push it down so it does that. I guess it still works. And then for here, we can get over to here and move this out of the way. And then I can kind of nudge this over, get around it, get it back, and then push this down. 
I keep like trying to just nudge it so I don't go down the ice as well, but then I, uh, I end up not um, putting much here. Oh, fuck. Well, it's just going to come right back, right? Yeah. Shit. This is bad. This is really bad. Well, anyway, um, we also know that you can destroy lovers with destroyer blocks. So what we could do is first get this block down to here, and then if we do this, we can send this block across. I can then also switch this lover thing up. You have to take your time, destroyer block. Okay. We can then flip this one, and it's going to just cause infinite problems from now. Great. Okay, well that's that was basically what you, you have. Sorry. Yeah, you hit this, come down here, flip this guy, let's try this one more time. Give it a little bit of a quicker nudge so it's not completely stupid. Once that gets destroyed, you can flip that to send it down here. You can flip this guy up. And I think I'll actually put this one over for now. And I'm going to go down here. Why am I stuck? My velocity should be zero, yeah? So why am I okay? No, I'm not. So now I can just push this block over here. And apparently go along with the ride for it. That one goes over to there. Which means we can then get sent up here and back down here. <laughs> eh. How do I get out? Yeah, just slide across here. And we can go up here, and we can go over to here. And then I can kind of go up a little bit and over to here. No, you bastards! I guess I can just go in the hole. Get myself killed. And then I can uh, flip this second lever. Then it goes down here, and then we can do the next one, right? How do I get down there again? Like this. And then over here. And down. And then we gotta wait for my velocity to stop. We push it. Push it to the limits. I fucked up and hit the block. Ugh. Okay, anyway. Now that those two are out, what we could do is we can take our lovely destroyer block and... I mean, I think that actually helped, potentially. Because now I can just come over here. And anyway, what I'm trying to say is that if we come over to here, we can then push our destroy block up, destroy that lever that is permanently like that. And we can actually come up here and destroy that lever too. We don't need that one either. So now we have more room to move up here. Which means we can just come over here, push this one over here, push that one down. And of course it's going to get stuck because why the fuck wouldn't it? We well, can just get that one down there now. Fucking having to line things up like this. This is bullshit. Okay. A little, a little less. These dang vile tile blocks, man. 
This level is going to take a while, which is, is good um, for me. I'm going to move these blocks over here so we can get them out of the way. Later on, dude. And you go too. And we can move this guy back up here. We can get the last block. Boosh. I don't know why I sent it that direction. I meant to send it down to the, the last one that was there, but that's fine too. So send that one down. It's then going to send it up. We will then send it over here and down. Which is then going to send it down there. I've got an error for... Maybe the pressure plate has not been assigned. A reset conveyor. Which pressure plate? Hold on. It's not telling me which one. There's only one pressure plate, right? So I had ignore destroyer, no exit trigger. So if game collision is destroyer block, if ignore destroyer is true, um, or just, if just ignore destroyers is not true, we do the trigger. But it is true. Wait, yeah, ignore destroyers is true. So we would do that, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that—that's an error right there. Fuck. <coughs> um, so we need extra logic there uh, to check if there's a conveyor belt to manipulate. So, um, here we want to check if. Conveyor to manipulate does not equal null. Then we want to do that. There we go. Smiley face. Okay. Now uh, we'll get that error when we're moving stuff across. Swag. Okay. That takes care of those. Um, so now our issue is if... Let me just get jostled around by the ice blocks a little bit here. So now we can move through here. I can move the... Shit. No! Okay. I'm gonna go... I said I wanna go, but apparently... Um, okay, so it just takes a second to actually, like, stop the player from moving here. Come on, my velocity is, like, near zero. I'm going to have to do something that's, like, if velocity is, like, really close to zero. It just allows me to move. Okay, well, this works. I'll just hit this. That was a really janky way to do it, but it worked. So we're going to move this block over to here. It's going to go up. I'm going to go up a little bit. I'm going to wait so that I can go back over to here. Not like that. We I don't know what I'm doing. Fuck, I did the same thing. Okay, you know what? Screw it. Let's go in the hole. Just go in the freaking hole. Had enough of this nonsense. So obviously our next play is to use a destroyer block to 
How did I even get that there? I had to have pushed it from like right here. Yeah, so that's fine. Our, our next move would have been to send a destroyer block down there in order to free that other block. So let's just do that real quick. Wham, ba -ba bam, ba -ba 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 so that will free that block, sending it careening down the path, killing thousands in its path, or just coming across the ice naturally. And we can get this one. Did I miscount? No, I did not miscount the blocks. I just destroyed one. I was like, why does it say five, but I only have four left? Okay, so that one's going to send it boop, into there. And so now our only option, our only uh, problems are these ones here, which we have issues with. So I think if I just add three more levers and three more conveyor belts here, here, and here, we can solve that problem, which we'll do. All right, so first let's go ahead and get rid of the ice here. I really wish I didn't have to do this because of course, there was another way, but this is unfortunately the only way to do it. So now we just have to grab all this ice, make sure it says, is the end. This one cannot move up. This one cannot move to the right. This one cannot move down. Rest in pieces. Okay. Next, we need this ice, which is going to be the end. Can't move left or right. Um, Or I guess it can move down, yeah. This one is end, cannot move down. This one. That one cannot move up. It is the end. This one is the end, cannot move left or right. Or right. Nope. All right, that one. This one can't move down is the end. This one can't move up is the end. This one. Is the end, cannot move left. I think I already did that one, yeah. So, oh, I didn't. This one, and then can't move up. This one, can't move down. This one, cannot move left or right. Perfect, okay. So all the ice blocks should be in place now to work properly. Um, now, we just need to add in our three extra levers to manipulate those other bear belts. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'll just copy the lever, like so. And then we'll just take these levers and throw in the conveyor belt we want now. I'm actually going to grab all these conveyors and just clear, clear that element out. I think I can do that right? Okay. So, wait, I think I made one too many. It's fine. It is fine. Okay. So this conveyor belt, Variable number 30. Congratulations. Uh, and I think we want them all to be up and right. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. This one's going to be conveyor belt 30. This one's going to be conveyor belt 31. And this last button, or last switch, we can get rid of. Excellent! Okay, so now everything should work properly to allow you to get the blocks where they go. You first of all would want to just as they are just flip this switch here send that one going up that way you can kill uh, get rid of these first the top ones are the hardest to deal with um, because then you can free up the levers and space to get up there it's also just mwah, perfect okay so let's go ahead we're gonna add all our stuff into this and then we will go ahead and play test it see how long it takes so item spawns we have um what was it again it was one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven blocks which we then need to make 11 item spawns or block spawns right there and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven Grab all those, put them into here. And before we forget, we of course need to change their positioning so that they are over 
where they are going to be spawning. Number four, five, six, seven. Here is eight. Uh, here is number nine. Here is the last one, which is number 11. Uh, I was just counting by the numbers that are at the end of them because it's easier to just see and notify and be like, boop. Okay. That's all of those. Next, we need to check the pressure plates. So pressure plate, just to make sure there. And then we need to get the levers. And then we need to grab the gates. I can spell gate right anyway. Boom. And then the depositor. Boom. Um, I do believe that's everything, right? We got the pressure plates, we got the movable blocks, we got the levers, the pressure plates. I think I said pressure plate twice. We got the depositor, pressure plate, levers, blocks, spawn block points, gates. And variables don't matter. Sweet. Okay. Nice, okay. Um, let's see. For the dialogue, what should we have? Hmm. Hmm. Let's say, let's get destructive now. You'll need to use on the destroyer blocks to basically annihilate anything in your path. I just want to look at this real quick. Is there a way? to get the destroyer block into here. It ignores that one. So, the only way you could possibly do it is if you somehow got it to like get stuck here on this lip, which if you're pushing it, I don't think it can be. Um, if you got it stuck here somehow, and push it down, you could also. But I don't think you can. I'm just gonna say, also in the I log here. Oh, and I messed with one of the conveyor belts so that it doesn't Recognize. I don't know why I thought that was spelled wrong. Recognize the destroyer blocks. I'm sure you'll figure. I'll set that for another one. I'm sure you'll figure out which it is. Quickly. Okay. So yeah, basically the goal of this level, you just destroy everything. Every single thing. All the gates get destroyed, the levers get destroyed, the depositor down there gets destroyed, these blocks all get destroyed. Everything gets destroyed. It's like an opera of uh, getting destroyed. Oprah? Not opera, my bad. Oprah. We'll start with an O. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. That's the level. All right, let's play test it and see how long it takes my genius to to figure out. <laughs> I think the third lever, no, it's gonna be the fourth. Fourth lever opens that one up. So let's start with that one. That'll be a little easier to deal with. And it's on its way. We'll get another one loaded up, ready to go. We can then flip this switch right about now. Okay. And then we wanna switch the next one going up. 
we can go ahead and get these all sent over. Okay. Probably the easiest way for me to get over there now. I guess I can just... God, fuck, I don't want to fuck up the thing. Oop. I don't know how that worked, but it worked. Okay. If I go to the right, I'm going to knock the block into the um, thing, I think. Unless I can get just over it. Oh, baby. There we go. Okay. What if I go up right now? And I time it just right. Yeah, boy. Although that's kind of bad for us. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Block. You were not supposed to be here right now. I will go ahead and just store you over here really quickly. So that way, uh, when you're ready, I can push you down. Um, hey, Block. You now. All right, destroyer Block. Go! It's gonna go, go, and then turn there, and then we're gonna go boop, and boop, boop. Let's get the next one ready. Not that one, this one. Yeah. Okay. And you go, over you go. Um, I'm gonna go over here. That actually, uh, no, not the hole. Well, shit. I guess that works for me. In a way. Remember, you can move on the conveyor belts, so you can, like, change your direction a little bit. It's not ideal right there. Okay, we'll push that. And then I'm going to go, I guess, back up. And I'm going to go over so I can push the block back over to here. This is really janky, and I'm not really sure that I enjoy how this is going right now. Um, I think I can just push this one up here as well, though. And then we can just kind of load them up like that. So if we flip this switch, it's going to go up. We'll flip that one. We can then just toss this one over here. It's going to hit that one up there. <laughs> which will be great. And then all we need to do is flip the last lever once again. Not that one. This one. So it's down. Excuse me? You piece of shit. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna see if I can, like, mess with it. If I can, if I can hit it. Oh, wait. No, okay. This is one of those times when the, uh... player would hit the reset level button. <laughs> but I... will just do that. Because I am the game developer and I can do what I want. Okay, so now that all those have been moved, we can then finally get rid of all these dumb levers that are blocking my way getting over to move these blocks and get them out of here. Okay, they're gone. I can now do this. And I can then do this. Perfect. And now we can get this block right here. Make sure I get my mouse out of the way. Little nudge, there we go. And then push. Ooh, is that gonna cause issues? I think it's gonna zip by just time. Perfect. Okay. Well, that one's coming down. Let's go ahead and line up this one. Once it passes, we'll send this one down. That way it can get sent up here and we can get these ones in. Send it down. This one going up. Gonna hit that button now. 
Send this one down. There you go. All right, let's nudge this back up here. Over to here. We can do both of these at once. I'll wait for the other one to come across. Just use that a little bit more. There we go. Send it down. And we'll wait for that one to come back up. We can go ahead and send this one down. And I can move this one out of the way. And that. All right. Now, the tricky part, where we have to do this. It's going to go across there. Destroy that. And that one will go in the hole. All right, next. Okay, we're going to go down so that I can get on this conveyor belt. So I can go down again. So I can push this block, maybe? Okay, what's wrong with this destroyer block? Uh, unlock that, please. So, so velocity is stuck at negative one, and it is is sliding. I can uncheck that though, and I can push it. And we need to real quickly go up. Oh, close. Okay. Yeah, I think that's just me needing to do a little extra something something here. So I think if I just follow this right here. I can hit here and then fuck up my entire day, I guess. Okay, let's move that down. I can... Please no. I'm just a slime. I'm just a slime. No! No! My velocity. Yeah, I really need to make it so, like, if you're moving, like, in infant highly slow, it just resets your velocity and stops you from sliding. Anyway, I'll just uncheck sliding, and then I'll be allowed to move again. Then I fucked up again. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's, that's fine, that's fine, fuck it. Anyway, probably freeing this one was a bad idea this early on. Um, stop. Anyway, I'm just going to move my player down to here. Then I'm going to move this block out of the way. I'm going to go up here. Why did you stop? Why did you stop? No, seriously, why did you stop? Why the fuck aren't you moving? And they both have the same stats on the right side, so I guess that would mean that yeah, it's for some reason does not have a conveyor change. For whatever reason. Anyway, that's about the, the thing. So it would take roughly, I'm gonna say seven minutes to beat it. Um, we do need to make a couple of changes, however. Uh, specifically, player move. Hey, uh, so I know we have that, but what about or? We want to check. Um, we need to do an and in here. We need to do rigid body 2D dot velocity dot X is less than um. Zero point zero one F and 
Well, this is a preserve one vial. Yeah. Or rigid body or and rigid body dot y is less than um, zero point zero five f. I think I need a uh, another statement here. Or so we're going to copy this and have this be negative. I think it is to be and, yeah. We want to check if it's between these two values. So if the x velocity is less than 0.5f and greater than negative 0.5f, because we can move in both directions, remember the x and the y, um, there's that. But we also want and we then want to do another one, which is and y is here is greater than negative 0 0.5 I think with this logic um, I think I can actually just space it down here so we have if we're not moving we want to stop sliding however if uh, or if the rigid body I'm actually going to put them on the same line since they're the same kind of like code here. Um, or we want to check if the um, x value is between negative and positive 0 0.05 and the y value between negative 0 0.05. Because remember, we could be just moving in one direction. Um, and in that case, y would be 0 and x would be like five or whatever so using an or here wouldn't work using an or here wouldn't work either because if we're moving in a direction of course it's going to be um that right so let me just make sure this works it does is that okay so that should take care of that problem um yeah okay i think that's really the only major issue we we're running into is the player just getting like I don't know what's going on. Um, except for the, you know, sometimes the block's not uh, moving on the conveyor belt. But I think that's more to do with the fact that I was having a weird glitch issue than anything else. We'll say this is feature complete. And uh, call that good. Okay. Let me just check this block of ice real quick. Not move left. Can move right and up. And move down. Okay. I think you're fine. So yeah, this definitely will be completed. Let me just double check here. Uh, depositor. Uh, it's gonna need 11. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then we're out and into the wild blue yarn. We will actually have to play test this level when we do our play testing and getting screenshots for everything. So we'll come back to it if it does not work properly, but I think it should work properly. Um, yeah. And thinking is all that matters. If only, right? All right. We can go ahead and throw in our next level to there. Save that. And that's level 36, 37 completed. Now we can go ahead and unlock this one. I get that one already. But we've reached the four hour mark of the stream. Actually, a really good time to end. Um, for me, anyway. I like to work four hours on the coding stuff, and especially if we're getting like the point where it's like we're running into problems and we just fixed a good, good bug anyway. So let's bring out our slime stuff to do thing. Uh, we're going to remove this because we completed it today. Using destroyer blocks to push over ice to destroy gates that are holding back movable blocks that then get pushed out 
by conveyors onto ice that then slide into a depository. That was great. Really fun level, really great time waster, to be honest. And that is what we need more of. We need levels where it seems simplistic, but it wastes the player's time by having them do things. And it's actually like engaging. It's not just like them waiting for something to happen, right? There's actually like something going on. And that was just great. So next we have timing pushing blocks across ice while attack towers are shooting across the icy path. So with this one, it, it's gonna have to be destroyer blocks or inverse blocks that we're pushing. And since you can't push a inverse block, um, you're probably gonna need to push a destroyer block. So we're gonna probably have a, a attack tower path and you're going to push a destroyer block and it's going to have to destroy like a gate at the end of it and get through all the different things there. So it's, it's probably going to be a short level. Uh, let's be completely honest. But hey, we've made plenty of short levels. Also, since that one was so long, um, it would help to have a short level afterwards. Cool. So that's going to be the plan for next time. I don't know why I closed that. Um, but yeah, we're... Uh, we are three levels away from getting to level 41, which has been our, our last 10 levels, our last world that we have planned right now. Well, I say planned, but there's no plan past this little thing here. We do have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more levels ready. So uh, I think we need six more in that case, right? We have 13 levels total, so yeah. Six and seven is 13. Excellent. And uh, remember, for the, the final stretch, the final world, world five, we're going to be introducing our red slime enemy, who is going to be in it every single level. Always going to have a red slime trying to kill the player and reset the progress. That is going to be the plan. And uh, yeah. So we can honestly make these three levels right here, and then the red slime's introduced, and the next tower also requests a red slime. So, perfect. All right. Level where the block being transported on a conveyor, you need to reach a certain point before the block reaches there. If you don't, the level resets. You need to reach a pressure plate that flips the conveyor belt and moves the block so you can push it. It feels like we've done it already, right? But not the level reset thing, I suppose. Um, that could be interesting to do for one of the uh, better levels. I like how number 10 is just something where you need to move blocks through portals since we haven't used many portals. Um, That'll be, that'll be great. I might think of some more here between now and uh, next stream. That's basically all for now. But before we end, let's open up our game world script because we forgot to do this last time as well. We don't have all of our new levels in here from world four. So we're gonna go ahead and add all these in here. Levels four, one through four, seven. Excellent. Back to save and unload this. So between this, uh, this stream and next stream, ladies and gentlemen, I, I will be, I'm going to look up that colorblind thing, like see if there's colors that the colorblind thing can be used. And starting next time tomorrow, uh, I might just dedicate the beginning portion of that stream to uh, editing those colors so that they, the, the colorblind people can play without issue too. Then there's people who are like, Red, blue, color blind, and yellow color blind, stuff like that. So I just think it would be nice, you know, if I could make it. I mean, if I can't, you know, so be it. Um, I'm not a AAA dev who is able to dedicate a lot of time to that kind of stuff or whatever. But as a little extra bonus, if it's something I can really easily do in like 10 minutes, why would I not? You know, so that will be the plan for next time. Uh, and of course, doing more levels, of course. So, uh, of course, of course. All right, everyone. Thank you all for hanging out. Um, and all that good jazz. But that's all for now. So, until next time.
Bye-bye.